I'd now like to come to Jonathan Elan to continue the case for the opposition. Thank you very much, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. Stormzy, unfortunately to my mind, just is not more relevant than Boris. Jasmine has me wrong. I'm a long-time rap fan. Um, in my day job, I'm a scholar of street culture. So I've examined the ways in which power and exclusion shape the lives of young people and indeed the society around us. And it's because I've studied these things for so long that I make the argument that I do. UK rap, and now has to be said, to a lesser extent grime, we had a little bit of genre confusion earlier, are extraordinary musical movements. From the socioeconomic margins, rappers have, in the words of Ice-T, created something out of nothing. Rap has been outselling rock music in the US. It's become pop music. It's key to our culture now in Britain and our culture industries, which is a leading aspect of our economy. It is extremely popular. Young people from across the socioeconomic spectrum look to it for inspiration, for, for hope. They see in it some defiance. They listen to soothe their souls, to coax their bodies into movement, to dance, be joyful, to love, to floss, boss, and assert their identity. Okay, so I'm not going to argue that it's not wonderful music. It really is. It's rich. Its proponents aren't... I'm not going to argue that they're gang members. Um, they're extremely talented and influential people. The entire cultural mainstream now takes its cues from rap and from street culture. So, by all of this, you could be tempted to think, well, yes, it's highly relevant. It is relevant, but it's not supremely relevant. And this is the point that I want to make today. There is nothing more relevant than power. Rap music is important, it's interesting, it's wonderful, but it's not where the book stops. That is with those who have power. And of course, power, as you all know, uh, very much exists within a hierarchy about those who have it and those who don't have it. And power is concentrated in very few hands. And whether the powerful choose to be well known or to be discreet and hide away, they are the truly relevant people in our society. Power is literally the ability to do things, to get things done. And the way that power operates impacts deeply on people in all walks of life. Okay, and so this is why I would argue that Boris is relevant, because it's his views, his speech, and his actions that have such deep impacts on such a great number of people. Storms is still relevant, but less relevant, because although he's a great artist with a big audience, and we've heard all this, and he stands at the apex of a rich culture and a rich scene, his power is limited, and his pronouncements have very limited effects. Let me return to one of the examples that's been brought up by a good few of my fellow speakers, the famous Glastonbury performance in 2019. Stormzy performed on the main stage, absolutely breathtaking performance. He repped UK rap and grind to the fullest, and he's just one of the artists who do things like this in festivals all over the world. And we might remember what took place. Stormzy, on that platform, led the chant. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn. That is what Stormzy did. Boris competed in an election against Jeremy Corbyn. And Boris won, not that I'm necessarily overjoyed about this, but Boris won the greatest Tory majority since Thatcher. And he ended up forcing Corbyn from power. So just compare these two individuals. Yeah, Stormzy called for a political change and didn't get it. Boris Johnson seized the political power. So it certainly seems, in this sense, that it's Boris that's the most relevant. Stormzy has called admirably and rightly for justice for the victims of Grenfell, and they're waiting for it still. Boris could deliver it tomorrow, and he hasn't. Okay, so we've got to understand what's really relevant here. It's not the kinds of culture that the proposition are talking about, although it's special, and it's wonderful, and it's deep, and it's so much of a part of people's lives. It's the power to shape and order people's world. That is what relevance is really about. Absolutely. If relevance is significance to a situation, surely the fact that nothing has been done about Grenfell Tower is essentially 
irrelevant to everyone involved because they are gaining nothing from that. Well, that's the point, and the, and the point is about power. The point is that, that Boris Johnson right, could give justice to those victims. So indeed, right, if, if, if the victims of Grandfell want somebody to bring justice to their cause, he's the relevant person to speak to. And, and the point is, he's, he's not listening to these pleas, but he's still the relevant person, I would say. But I appreciate your point. So really, a lot of what the proposition would say, I would be in a certain amount of agreement with, but except for one key crucial difference, which one of our speakers has already mentioned. And this is really comes down to this whole definition of relevance. Okay, and in my work, I've looked at the concept of cool and I've looked at the extent to which rappers and other street cult cultural subjects influence how we dress, how we hold ourselves, the music we listen to, how street culture has influenced art and commerce. Okay, but the culture industries can harvest this cool surface relevance. Okay, um, and they can do that because they're powerful. Powerful power is a relevance force. While the PM himself seems to be gathering up the rapper cliches, he's the individual who's accumulating the baby mothers, he's the ones Ill illegally partying, burning through money fast, right? Stormzy holds himself very diff differently. Christian, kind of pinnacle of, of black British excellence, and built an amazing scene um, and a wonderful career for himself. And I can accept, as the proposition of, I've asked us to, that he speaks to the experiences of a great number of people, a global majority even. He speaks to the disappointment and the disaffection of a younger generation. He speaks also to their refusal to seed hope. He's inspiring as an individual and as an artist. And he, along with others, Dave was mentioned, Potter Paper, amazing, many, many more aren't just great musicians, aren't just great rappers, they're phenomenal musicians. They're rich in emotional range clever wordplay, and very importantly, of course, moving melodies. But as somebody sociologically trained, I would say that we always have to understand that culture is subject to power itself. Power is, I suppose, yeah, supreme over culture. The communities who produce rap music are marginalized themselves. Rap music continues to be wrongly looked down upon. It's criminalized in various different ways that I've studied. Yeah, videos are taken down off YouTube. Rap lyrics and rap videos are actually used as evidence in criminal trials. Often in a way I find very, very questionable. So the question then becomes that if a culture is being marginalized, as it were, by power, how can that culture be more relevant than the power that oppresses it? Yeah. And I don't want to personalize this, but we can see this operation power, again, comparing situations that Stormzy and the Prime Minister have gone through. Power is all about the ability to do things and get things done, as I said. But despite everything he's achieved, the amazing things that Stormzy has achieved, he, like many other rappers, are still subject to marginalizing forces. Okay, maybe his poverty is more historical, but he experiences racism and exclusion. Stormzy, I don't know that many people know this, but in 2017, Stormzy, having gained a bit of success, bought a new flash in Chelsea. That flash, uh, after a call was put in by the neighbours, was raided by the police, who forced entrance and sat with Stormzy for a number of hours. He'd been asleep. He'd done nothing wrong. He was just sit sleeping in his own home. Now let's think by contrast of Boris Johnson's behavior in an apartment that we all own. So not even his own home. There've been questions about how that flat was decorated, who paid for the decorations. There've been questions about whether illegal parties were taking place there. And for a long time, the authorities even refused to investigate that. So look at just that huge disparity between Stormzy having his flat raided for doing nothing wrong and the Prime Minister, who may have done something wrong, and the authorities deciding, for a time in any event, not even to investigate. So Boris has the power to be himself, to do what he wants, and to change our lives. Right? And although those storms you can speak to experiences of the great number more people have had, 
Yeah, it doesn't mean that Stormzy is more relevant. Even if Stormzy is more popular, seen as a better judge of political issues, more respected, more like, whether he has more YouTube views or Instagram whatsoever the jigs, his lack of political power means that he cannot be understood as more relevant. So this motion can only pass if we believe what is relevant is what is cool, for want of better words. But in my work, I argue the opposite. What is relevant is the exercise of power. The powerful, if they so want, can exploit the urban poor and exploit communities of color for their coup in order to make a profit. The powerful have the ultimate relevance, the capacity to do what they want, say what they want, to live well, to reproduce their privilege and escape accountability. Storms, he is famous and influential, but he's not relevant in the field of power. The elites shape the field that the rappers play on. The elites write the laws that censure the rappers. The elites like Boris Johnson are more relevant than rappers like Stormzy, however amazing rap is. And thus, I would argue that the motion can't stand. Thank you.